<clears throat> Hello there, my fellow scuba divers, and welcome to 4546B. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Hi. My name is Bacon, and I'm a senior Altera security information consultant. In today's class, I'll brief you brave new explorers on the dangers of this planet and its different biomes using this Altera patented tier list chart. We'll be ranking them based on how many diapers you need to bring with you to them and how likely you are to actually come back. So, let's dive in. Ah, the shallows. Truly a biome worth visiting. It will probably be your first stop on planet 4546b, and that's good, because it also ranks among the safest. The very landscape of corals and tunnels will be decorated with all kinds of tasty fish and basic resources to help you survive. Now, yes, this place is home to... that thing. But hey, as long as you stay far away from the caves, I'm sure you'll be... Uh, what is that? Hey, do you guys hear that? Oh, sh... <clears throat> no, I'm fine. The Kelp Forest, truly a gorgeous biome to navigate, and also quite a scary one if you're just starting out. That's mostly thanks to stalkers that, contrary to popular belief, won't really stalk you that much. They will take your middle though. So chill biome, good resources, close to the surface, slight spooks. D tier. Now the grassy plateaus... Oh my god. Is everyone okay? Yeah, no, don't worry about that, it's just a reef bax. You see, the grassy plateaus might seem quite dangerous at first. I mean, we have the tiger plants, biters in the grass, and sharks with brain damage, but really, these wide open areas are about as safe as they come in this world. So, tread onwards bravely. Do stay away from the grass, though. <laughs> Tired of water, eh? Well, that's rough, because we're just getting started, but sure, why not? Let's take a little breather on the region's islands. Now, the trip to these could be in some cases precarious, but once you're on, the only thing you really have to worry about are the jumpy, creepy crawlies. Slightly spooky, I'd say. It will really make you not want to go back on the water, though, and that's exactly where we're going. D tier. And moving to C tier. Uh, trust me, I don't like the sound of this one either. A step up from the previous category, there are a lot more things that could potentially eat you in the mushroom forest. From bone sharks to ampules, doesn't that just sound lovely, to mesmers that can possibly scramble your brain to mush. Look, as long as you bring a vehicle, you'll probably be fine. Definitely don't like it here, though. C tier. Well, the sparse reef certainly is... sparse? Look, it's the best I've got, okay? And I don't mean just of resources. This place really doesn't have many creatures in it either, and certainly none that pose much of a threat. Now granted, the aesthetic of this location sure is spooky, but overall, you should take this over what's coming next any day. C tier. Now I wouldn't blame you if at first, you thought we were still in the sparse reef, because honestly, the crag field is quite similar to it, both in appearance and in population, except the bone sharks. Yeah, these things will somehow tear through your sea moth like a hot knife through butter, and they certainly won't stop there. Add to that the sound they produce, which always makes me think there's something else out there, but alas, somewhat spooky. C tier. Can, Can we, we take, take a, a break, break please? please? There are no breaks during this class, so you better hold that filtered water in. But, as a reward for good behavior, let's go visit more islands. Yay! Except these ones are underwater. Aww. Aww. Now yes, technically, this biome has the same fauna as the crag field, but let me tell you, those bone shark noises sound even less pleasant when staring off the edge of a floating island into the abyss. Great for photography, though. C tier. <laughs> Poop. Um, I mean, the sea treader's path. As the name suggests, it is the path the sea treaders walk. They're really the least of your concerns, though, unless you go provoking them, since Warpris can already appear at this point, and there is no shame in needing new underwear after being teleported by one. It happens to everyone, not just me. C tier. And moving up into B tier, we have the glowy balls of the Bulb Zone. Now, this might sound fun at first, and yes, the area is gorgeous at night, but take the hyper-aggressive bone sharks of the islands, 
add the shockingly electrifying ampules, and you've got yourself a bad time recipe for any inexperienced diver. B tier. And up next, we've, we've already, already had, had mushrooms. mushrooms. The Jelly Shroom Cave is certainly iconic and a gorgeous area to spend time in, but be wary of those giant purple mushrooms as within them one can find the crab snakes. These things really don't want you swimming around their territory and won't hesitate to take a bite out of you or any vehicle that you might bring along. And there's a crab ton of them too? <laughs> Get it? B tier. Now if having blood in the name wasn't enough of a hint, the blood kill zone matches 7 out of 9 preconditions for stimulating terror in humans, and to be honest I could easily bump that up to an 8 personally. Ampules and warpers are assisted by smaller hostile fish, such as the blighter, which overall just makes for a really bad time. It's like the bad neighborhood of 4546B, you prefer to walk through faster than usual. Now yes, more balls are upon us, this time the suspended ones in the Grand Reef. This biome seriously steps it up a notch, since it not only shares a large border with the void, no thanks, but it also contains a ghost leviathan that would want nothing more than to munch on your diving gear covered butt. Add to that bone sharks, warpers, crab squids? Just why? B tier. And the last of this tier, the mountain. S I like hiking. <clears throat> so the mountains have one big issue, and it's not the warpers or the biters, it's the reapers. <gasps> yeah, this place has a cool aesthetic, but just know that if you hear the roar in the distance, it's probably already too late. Be dear. Now for the A tier, this is where we really get into it. All the biomes from here on out are a pretty hard avoid, unless your nerves are truly made of steel. And first on this list is the Lost River. Why, Why is it, it called, called that? that? Be because it's a river that's easy to get lost in. I don't know, any more dumb questions like that and you get detention. <clears throat> so yes, a very unique biome filled with corrosive brine, river prowlers, skeletons of your worst nightmares, and a ghost leviathan to boot. A tier. And from the cold we dive straight into burning hot with the inactive lava zone. Now, don't let the inactive in its name confuse you. The hostile fauna in this place is very active, including power sucking eels and a freaking dragon? I mean, why would you ever go to a place where the very water hurts you? A tier. This is also a good place to talk about the active lava zone. It's basically the same, but more confined, deeper, and hotter. Very unpleasant. A. A. This is it, y'all. If you're still with me, then you're either incredibly brave or foolish, or both, I guess. Let us finish this list with S tier. S, of course, stands for Seriously, these violence will actually haunt my dreams? Or scary, that also works. The Dunes. This place is like the mountains, but worse. More Reapers, larger border with the Void. Honestly, why would you even go here? S tier. Alright, so the Crash Zone. Look, I've never been there, it's just way too scary. But basically, picture the dunes, but worse again. Tons of reapers, no visibility, massive void border, and radiation makes this the perfect holiday destination for your worst enemies. S tier. You don't leave the class until I've dismissed it. We still have one more. Who could forget the Crater Edge, or Void as it is commonly known. This is technically the largest biome in the game, consisting of basically one massive chasm going into black crushing depths, and a trio of ghost leviathans set on unaliving you by any means available. No resources to help, no friendly fauna, just you and the cold embrace of death. S tier. And on that, we're done. Don't forget to hand in your essays before our next class, 500 words on why the hoverfish is cuter than the cuttlefish, and if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. With that, I'm gonna wish you a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Class dismissed.